What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel for House of Dragons episode two. Yeah, two. Uh, I got some new people with me. Actually, I got a new person with me. This is Jake the Viking. Uh, remember, I went to Penhurst and almost died. That's the guy who took me right there. So I said, well, you owe me one. So I dragged him on this. You know, he's coming down with the common folk. <laughs> and uh, we're going to interview episode two. And I also got my brother Lee here as well. So we're going to go right into it like we always do. We're going to start with the beginning. And before I could say anything, as soon as I turned the show on, it was... <laughs> the original theme is back i'm happy with it i'm glad because i don't know if they could have done anything better than what we originally had from game of thrones no that theme is incredible it was good to have it really have it back and the the new animation i thought was fantastic it's very very interesting with uh i guess we're gonna call it blood or can we call it blood or should we say wine for youtube no, you call it blood. I think you call I, it. I think it was you blood. Call it that, and it's it's got to be representing the bloodline of the Targaryens. Yeah, it's just passing um, the houses. It's touching each of the houses and showing you how they're all joined. Very, I'm ready to see uh, someone go through and break down frame by frame of this because <laughs> yeah. there's definitely some cool hidden details. Like I think right at the end, you see the um, the dragon with the shields representing the different houses. Yeah. So, that, that was definitely a really cool intro. I'm a fan of it. I was too. happy. I was happy to hear it because I'm just like, Duh. I get my arm going and everything. <laughs> uh, so then from there, they take us to the very opening scene, which is this. Yeah. You see a lot of dead bodies and crabs. These little crabs you could see just but, munching but that, away. That was, they weren't, some of them weren't dead. That's what freaked me out because they the look people, like. you mean. They, yeah. yeah. And then also the, the crab is like feeding and then. They start it moving. Like, right? <laughs> it was like, oh, it was the foot one, right? Because they're eating at the the exposed yeah. uh, muscle, and then the yeah. foot moves. And it was like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, it creeped me out a little bit there. That was how you start out an episode, like super strong, straight to the point. It's like it's getting real, yeah. And this is this is what's happening. It was, oh man. And what you could see here on this frame is that someone came around. And literally nailed people to pieces of wood so they can be eaten alive by crabs. Yeah. So you could see the nails uh, right there. And so they were eaten alive by crabs. And yeah, so this is how we start off episode two. And then we go right into the courtroom scene. Well, this is the, uh, I guess that's the opening scene right there where. And I will uh, say they got, they got us with this last episode because they kind of showed the trailer. I thought we yeah. were going to have a fight. But instead, yeah. we got this, which. It worked really well. I was just expecting a fight. The aftermath. Didn't see mm -hmm. the fight, but all the, the crab feeding going on. And then we immediately go to the king's court where he's talking. And this guy, it, this guy just kind of comes in and they're like, hey, we got to pick a new. Uh, we got to pick a new gu guard leaderman, right? Is that, was that what it was called? Captain of the guard, right? Yeah. yeah. King's guard commander. The king's yeah. guard commander. Remember, everyone, we are uh, newbies. <laughs> <laughs> reviewing the show yeah I knew, so i still don't have everyone's name memorized yet it's it's bad it's like yeah the king's daughter's best friend his daughter that person yeah it's it's gonna take some time but we'll oh. we'll get it before the end of the uh before the end of the season <laughs> but this is what really sets up the uh this is what really sets up the show right here mm -hmm. uh name help me out yep uh, he's a Valer uh, he's from That's Valeria. Lord Corliss Valerian. Yes, Lord yeah. Corliss comes busting into the seams and was like, "Hey, my navy, I, like my armies are being, you know, torn apart at this certain area. You need to like saddle up, King, and like yeah. help me, help me defend." And the king was like, "Ah, uh, you'll be all right. Like, don't worry about it. It's like yeah. you're gonna be all right." So this. This is very important scene because this sets the tone for the entire episode. Uh, yep. This sets the tone because now he's been rejected by the king for help because of his armies or navy is just being uh, destroyed by what he called. the Did he call him the crab man? The crab feeder. The crab, crab feeder. Some, yeah. But th this was cool because this definitely this comes in. It helps explain to what you just saw. Right. And right. It was. But he's was, good. I would say he's pissed. He's, he's not just like, hey, you think you can help me out? He's like, you will. I, I need now help for this. And the king, yeah, to Jay's point, says, the king's just kind of like, 
relax. You're yeah, because right. he says like this is the third attack. He said yeah. he said yeah, he gives a number of how many times this has happened, and then the king kind of is like, he's like, eh, we'll get to it. He's like, it's not a priority, but we'll get to it, you know. And he kind of brushes it off, and it's definitely not the answer he wanted. So we're learning about King Viserys. He's he's <laughs> soft, right? He's yeah. not this. Like he's not Aegon the Conqueror, he's not the Mad King, nothing like that. He's like really soft, and he doesn't want any war. He wants to just mm. no, I just want to be chill, uh, leave me alone, and and don't bother me with stuff. I just want to have my princess as the heir, and I'm good. And then, like uh, Lord Corliss, he's not having it. He doesn't want anything to do with this. I love um, his daughter Rhaenyria. Is that right, yeah. Rhaenyria? Yeah. When she comes in and says, send out the dragon riders. Yes. It, I was like, ooh. But then, she of course. Yeah. She immediately she, just jumps in there and was like, let's just burn them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she instantly just gets shut down because, one, she's she's a woman at the court. No one, well, she's not even really at the court. She's just in the room with she's the court. serving. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's the server. She's a cupbearer. Yeah. She's the cupbearer. So it's like, why are you talking? Yeah. But it's like, hmm. It definitely shows how the hierarchy and I guess patriarchy, is it right, works within this, where it's like she has no say, even though she is the heir and the princess to the king. Well, she challenged everybody in the room except for Lord Corliss, including the king, yep. challenged them all to say, do this instead. And I think Lord Corliss responds with, well, at least the princess has a plan. Yeah. It's yeah. then embarrassed another, everybody another else jab. at that table. Another jab. I, I loved it. Like I'm 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 loving the acting because I think everyone does such a great job in this. They've definitely got like a top A list of actors who are just doing a great job with this whole thing. Cause you feel all the emotions, like when uh she, she says, Let's take the dragon riders, you could feel the air just like stiffen because it's yes. like, who are you? You just it was good. Now we have as to remember. A fan, I got oh, go pumped. Oh, I'm sorry, Jay, but as, as a fan, I got pumped when she said that because I'm like, yes. "Oh, now we're gonna see some dragon action. I am ready for this. Let's go." And then they just maybe the princess would like to go uh, pick a new guard or something. Like yeah, that. that's <laughs> and, and that's the next scene. And we have to remember too that there's been a lot of time since episode one and episode two. Six months. Uh, about six months has passed already. So. She literally looks at the hand and was like, no, I'm making my pick and you're going to have to deal with it. While he was trying to play like strategic chess, she said she wanted to pick the one with the most skill. Yeah, I yeah say, definitely. Sir Otto Hightower, he is definitely a schemer and he's got yeah. a plan in place that we may have not been totally revealed to yet, but he's definitely got a plan. Yeah, he's pushing like his, I mean, he started doing it in the first episode. He's pushing his daughter off. To the king, like I'm the king. Yep. Go, go wear he's, one of your mom's dresses too when you see him. <laughs> he's he's playing that game that we learn of uh, in Game of Thrones that Tyrion tells us about, um, and you catch up on it heavy, and you can definitely tell that the king is already getting manipulated by pretty much everyone right. at the table. Um, before we get too far though, how do y'all feel? Um, because it, it happens again going into episode three, if we find out from the trailer about the time jumps, because we don't know how many seasons we're getting. And between one and two, we're already getting confirmed six months. And then, spoilers, you haven't seen it. Between two and three, we find out it's probably going to be at minimum, what, three, four years? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually not a fan. <laughs> I don't I don't mm. like it because it's, it's, it's challenging for me to keep up with it. Like, okay, I got to remember that that was a year ago, six months ago, whatever. Yeah. I, I feel like there's so much content there that they can, <laughs> they can make more episodes, but, you know? Yeah, but, and it hurts because, again, we don't know, like, do we know how many episodes the season is? And then it's like, how many seasons are we getting? So is is the time jumpage justified? Because again, we're already like, going into episode three. We've already jumped. We'll just say four and a half years in three episodes. Wow. And so well, I'm like, see, the thing is, too, it's like this episode here. It I didn't think it was terrible, but I think it dragged a lot. Uh, I, I for me personally, I think it I think they uh, it just it just moved really slow. I know they're setting up something. But they were moving really slow as we get into like this scene right here. So we're getting into this scene where the hand this is the hand's daughter, mm -hmm. and you see a relationship between the king and the hand's daughter where it's almost like he talks to her like he would talk to his wife. Yeah, he, so. he finds some very odd comfort in her. 
Yeah. You know, and so he's sitting there. I do love the fact that he's like he's building like a replica of King's Landing. Yeah. Model, yeah, cool, he's, model he's, building. He's like he's talking to her. Like, I guess the best way to build it is like he's talking to her like he would speak to a therapist. Like he's trying yes. to figure out how the best way to handle his daughter, the best way he should be king. And it's like it's a very interesting relationship you're forming with the, your hand's daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is it a model of King's Landing or is it old Valyria? I thought it was uh, King's Landing, but it might be old Valyria. But I, I, again, it's cool to see. So the lore, uh, you guys may know more than me, but the lore is Old Valyria was built in the mouth of a volcano because they wanted to be closer to where the dragons needed right. to have their eggs and all this stuff. But the volcano erupts and engulfs Valyria and essentially destroys it. And then they've charted out and then went to Westeros or something and then built the Red Keep and the Sept in that whole city. I think I got that right. Sounds good. Okay. Just, well, <laughs> was there something about um, Aegon's dragon destroying a lot of it too? Yes. Yeah. I, I think you're right. I don't know the details. I'll have to do some homework. But speaking um, of dragon, how about the little insider we find out in this episode? Oh it's yeah. We'll save it for that, it's coming up. We'll save that. We'll save. Yeah, that. yeah. We're getting there. But again, like I, as I, even as I fast forward. The still the relationship with the hand's daughter and the king, they're talking about different things. So then basically he tells the hand's daughter, he's like, I don't know how to what's her name again? Gosh, Rhaenyra? Yeah, Rhaenyra? yeah. Rhaenyra? Basically, he's like, I don't know how to talk to my daughter. It's been so long. So mm -hmm. then she takes it upon herself to go in the next scene to speak to the king's daughter and try to you know put Bond, that relationship yeah. back together with her father. Uh, hats off to the guy who lit all those candles. There was a ton of candles. <laughs> like it was what? like wow. And you know, with all the the way they got the fans set up, I guess it was, they were all flickering nice. I'm sure he was constantly lighting candles. But basically, she tells her to kneel with her and talk to her mom who had passed on. And she's like, I don't know what to say. And he, she's like, just say whatever you want. And you could see her crying. So you could see some of that pain still in there. And she's like, maybe you should start the conversation with your father with your mm -hmm. dad uh instead of waiting on him to talk to you and that's that's the end of the scene there so she put that um she put that little nugget in her head to go speak to her dad because they're both um, waiting for the other to speak right because they both have that pain and then also they show again in the candle scene um her not being hurt by fire because i think her hand goes through the flame and she doesn't flinch like when she's lighting the candle i'm pretty sure that happened again they keep doing like the subtle details to them being immune to fire. It was her right. dad one because he was in the first episode he was waving through, and then they've done her I think twice. Well, yeah, you find out that it's only one little one little clan uh, is the dragons. You mm -hmm. know, the rest of them had to do other things. He took the king and his daughter went to visit Corlys Valerian yes, Cor and his uh, visit his sister, Princess, Princess wife, Rain. is it not? The, that's the king that. The queen that what do they call her? But it's it's his it's, is that his cousin? His or, or his, his aunt. They're it's probably not, he said something like my favorite aunt is also my cousin, or something like that. My yeah. aunt is also my favorite cousin. He dropped some line, and I think that's just a nod to the fact that Targaryens like to keep the bloodlines pure and kind yeah. of keep it in the family, so to speak. But but this this was to me, this was disgusting. I get it, but this yeah. was a cruel this this just shows you uh this guy's intentions right yeah he wants to offer his 12 year old daughter to the king and propose a marriage between the two to connect the family the families yeah and it's like let us join houses i don't know about that one chief Blech. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it um, did it did get a little weird but that was the whole meeting was that they got together and then they go to this scene while they're there <laughs> where daddy daughter have a conversation, you know, and Day he's short conversation. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're having conversations. But what what they're doing is, again, the dragging of the episode for me. He's building up to the fact where he's like, look, I loved your mom, mm -hmm. but I got to marry somebody else. I, I just want you to know I, I'm going to marry someone else, but I loved your mom. No one can replace her. So he's just kind of like building that into her because, you know, she's like and she does all these weird lines where it's constantly like, I understand. He, she's like, you're the king. 
do whatever you want. You're the king. Yeah. You can speak freely. You're the king. I know your duty. So then that that wall starts to break down a little bit. And he's just like, look, I love your mother and no one will replace her. And she's like, yeah, that makes me happy to hear you say that. He goes, she goes, but I understand you got to marry someone because you're the king. Yeah. It, it, so let, me, let me ask a question because that I was I was trying to figure this out. So. In the beginning, Lord Corliss Valerian comes in. He's like, I, I want the crab feeder stopped. Uh, he's tearing up my, destroying my navy. I want this. Mm -hmm. The king denies him. Now he's going to the king saying, let's join houses. Is he just trying so bad or trying so hard to get this war to stop that he's willing to off his daughter to get what he wants? Or is he really trying to make some other power play here by trying to get the king to marry his daughter? I think it's another power play. Because I just look back to Game of Thrones when you learn about the game. I think it's a power play he's trying to make for the long run. Because right now, like the short term problem or the short term issue is the guy is the crab feet or whatever, right. you know, attacking his fleets. For him to offer his daughter just to get that to stop doesn't sound right. Right. So I right. Just think it's a, it's a long term. And for anybody asking, no, I haven't read the books. I have no idea. This is uh, just, me neither. This is where we are, <laughs> episode two. Just real quick, this was. The little girl that they, the daughter that they wanted to marry the king. And you could obviously see the king was disgusted by this. He didn't really <laughs> want to do this. He was just like, no, like whatever. He just was asking her basic questions. And you could tell that the daughter was from the father. The father was like, answer it this way. Read the cue cards. Say it like this. And the king was just like, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. I and love, then you're uh, the when he asked, uh, what'd your mother say? Yeah. She was like, that I wouldn't have to beg till I was 14. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh. And then we get to this scene right here. They just <sighs> if I can get a still frame of them together. Dude, just just you know, shot after shot after shot between them two. But I just love how. Uh, the queen that never was is just being so brutally honest. Yeah. You know, and it's, I think Rainier is hearing it for the first time and it's just like, she's being straight to the point. Like, no, this is how it is. You have all these ideas, but no, this is how it really is. This is really powerful dialogue between mm -hmm. the princess rain, 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 rain. Her, her, it's Rainier and I don't know. I might, I might look it up just to figure queen it out. Queen that never was. Queen that never was. We'll go with that, but very powerful dialogue between her and the young princess and the princess is given a reality check of what mm -hmm. life is like. And she's kind of at a crossroads, I feel, where she's going, should I conform or not on my watch type thing? I love I love her comment where um, it's Princess Ray Rainus. Yeah, R-H-A-E-N-Y-S, Rainus. Yeah. I love her comment where she said the men would rather see the country go to war than have a woman ascend the throne. Yeah. Because we've basically already seen that. Yeah. And from Game of Thrones with Daenerys right. come over, they just tear up the entire countryside to stop it. And she's come in and she said, well, they all bent the knee, so I'm going to be the queen. And she's like, yeah, you think so? Yeah, mm -hmm. that ain't going to happen, Missy. I'm sorry. You, you could think all you want. But once the king gets remarried and starts popping out some more kids, you're just going to be an afterthought. You're gonna be Trust me. You know, Which, and then she just looks at her like, eh, coming from you, the queen that never was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like pop so. cold death stares between the two of them again the acting here was just superb it was Very really good. good it was uh did you did we go get, get past the maggot treatment mm. i got some we questions got, about that one we gotta talk about that yeah Wait, what? that brings up a whole thing the when maggot treatment the maggot treatment to help uh fix his pinky because he's got rot from uh getting cut on the chair He's got all sorts of infections going on. Mm -hmm. That was in the other episode. That, that was the episode. episode. There, there was Man, the, what did I miss that? There was the injury in his back in the first episode that was yeah, all pussing out. And it wouldn't heal. And that is from the, the throne. Chair, the throne. And then yeah. he, in the first episode, he cut his finger. But in <laughs> this episode, he's had, having to dunk it in a bowl of maggots as they eat away the dead flesh. And again, it's all a sign of weakness um to yep. the masses because you don't even know how to sit on the throne properly without getting cut to pieces so all bad omens they don't like it they're trying to fix them up and it's not healing so and again does, this is more 
to say that the king is a soft king. He's very weak. He can't even sit on the throne properly. And guess who does know how to sit on the throne properly? Damon. <laughs> they Damon. showed that. I was watching, I forgot what video it was, but they showed the king always leaning to the left. And where has he gotten hurt? The left. The left and they side. showed Damon sitting on the throne and he's leaning on the right. Showing he knows the left side is the wrong is the, is the bad side, so lean right, and it's it's a very interesting play there. But yeah, so this looking, scene, oh, go ahead, Jake. Real quick with the maggots, does that hurt? Does it tickle? You know, because are they eating like a lot of his hand, or are they just focusing on the dead? Like, so I've heard of maggot treatment, but they only eat the dead flesh. But um, I cannot speak from experience. Uh, I, I've never had that before. <laughs> It's just, it just very a lot of questions. A lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. Just put a band-aid on it, man. Come on. Keep it moving. <laughs> Get some iodine, man. I don't know. Whatever. Speaking of Damon, we're back in the king's court, and someone busts into the door and said, Your brother has taken over Dragonstone. I believe that's the name of the city. And he also took a dragon's egg. And the king was like all riled up. He's like, Really? Well, I'm gonna go get him and bring his butt back here. He's gonna face justice. And at that moment, the hand. Stands up and was like, no, King, I can't allow that. It's too dangerous. You stay here. I'm going to take some some men and go over there. That And then they started to share. They're like, listen, Damon took many members of the Gold Cloak Army. Is that what it's called? I think he took the entire Gold Cloak. Yeah. So he took them. He's sitting on a palace somewhere. And he's got another dragon's egg. And so now he's causing trouble. And he's like, he sends a letter to the king saying, I'm the rightful person that's supposed to be you know, on the throne. I'm the rightful person, the next heir. So I got all this, what belongs to me. And then he says in the proclamation, I'm getting married again. <laughs> and I'm about to like, you know, the person yeah. I'm with is the about child. to have a child. That's why I took the, the dragon egg. Yeah. Because apparently when they give birth as a child, you put the dragon egg next to the, the baby yep. and there's a connection. And you have to understand the significance of Dragonstone. Dragonstone belongs to the heir until they can take over the throne at the red keep i guess so technically dragonstone belongs to the princess as she's been named heir but damon out of protest says i'm taking dragonstone and then he also took the egg so he is really trying to stir up some problems here for the family and then when we find out which egg which was technically reina's brother's egg the egg she chose to be her brother's before his one day of life. Right. You find that out. And that's when like it just tips over the edge and everyone really gets heated up. It's like, you know, everyone's still upset about the the uh the death of the baby. So now we have now we come up on this scene. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this scene's very this was a very important scene, uh, because of what the uh the hand says to his daughter right before he leaves. He tells her, Go comfort the king tonight. So he's playing a very interesting game that we find out what it is later. And I'll save that for when it happens. Interesting game of Thrones. <laughs> so the hands trying to push somebody off on the King. And so is Lord Corliss. And it's just, they're all creepy. I don't uh... This, this scene was really cool because you see the issue with sending the hand instead of the King, because there, there's no, what's what I'm looking for. There's no like respect given from either one of these two. And they're ready when we find out they're ready to duke it out right here, right now. Yeah. Right. They're they're ready to start a, an entire war. Damon doesn't care because he hates he hates middle finger. Middle finger hates Damon. So they're ready to duke it out. Then that's when they draw swords and Damon's dragon comes up, which is honestly one of the cooler dragons we've seen because of his back legs have the wings on them. I think that's probably one of the cooler dragons. And of course, we get there it is. The sword's getting drawn. Come on, give me a scene to stop. There we go. That's there what I want. Is, there it is. That's, That's what I want. Oh, man. Sorry, Jake. You might have to repeat all that all over again. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's YouTube. You know, I can't show like the the, the whole video. You got like 10, 12 seconds you can rock with. Just don't have any audio. That's true. That's true. But that this this scene is just very. We're coming to, I guess, the tip of the sword because it's it's where everything's coming together. The big conflict of this episode, really, um, where you have 
the uh, middle finger because I don't know his name and everyone calls him middle finger now because of little finger going up against Damon. <laughs> and it's just like they're just button heads and here this shot you got here just shows man they're ready to throw down right here on this bridge there's no negotiating none well when the hand and his army draw out their swords Damon's dragon shows up yeah and then it's like of course oh, here the, we go the comment of uh I forgot the knight's name because remember, Damon's like, I don't remember your name. And he goes, well, perhaps he'll remember that I knocked him off his horse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome line. Uh, Sir Kristen Cole. There it is. Yep. God, yeah. that was such a good line. Trained by, I think he's trained by the Dundarian family. If you remember Beric Dundarian, the flame sword guy with mm -hmm. the missing eye from Game of Thrones. Then the other dragon just swoops in and you could see. This was boss scene. Yes. She took this into her hands. Uh, almost in the style. I get I get a lot of uh Daenerys from her. As in, like, oh yeah, absolutely. Woman. She can do it, she's gonna defy the man, she's gonna break the break the rules. And she just shows up and gets right in Damon's face and says, Here I am, the reason for all your problems. You want to be heir? Kill me. Do it. Yep. And he just stands there because there's there's an interesting love here. And I yeah, can't yeah. tell if it's, if it's a family love or if it's like, I love you, love, because we know Targaryens like to keep the bloodline pure. But this is an interesting dynamic. I'm excited to see what happens with this as the episodes go on. Now, There's course, definitely a uh, very curious attraction between the two of them. I mean, he's bringing her gifts. He's the only one that will see her. She's definitely, yes, yes. She's definitely not afraid of him at all. She clearly in this scene here shows that uh, I, there's definitely a connection here. Something is going to happen with the two of them down the road. I just love sure. it because, well, we saw the two dragons. She had no fear, but just like Jake said, she just kill me. And he just like walks away and then he just tosses the egg at her. Tosses the egg right back to her. <laughs> And so she takes it and uh, they, they put it in like a, you know, the little kettle to keep it warm. And, and right she, before this, too, they expose his lies about the woman. Right. Yeah. He was using as his wife to be and mother. She she like she understands old Valyrian because they're, they, they show up and they're speaking in old Valyrian. Right. Yeah. And she's able to she knows what it is. So it's interesting to see who she is, because I don't think she it tells us who she is. She hears him saying, like, oh, it's his wife to be and she's going to have a child. And she's like, what? And then she just turns around and leaves. So that's an interesting uh, key, because I don't think everyone knows old Valyrian here. So I thought I took that at, at first. I thought um, she was frustrated with him. I mean, obviously for the lie, because he was telling me that um, that she's with child. But she's mm -hmm. the prostitute from the first episode yep. whom he was trying to bed and had performance issues. <laughs> so <laughs> did she walk away out of frustration because of his performance issues or because, because <laughs> he was totally lying to everybody about who she really is? Uh, I don't know. I started laughing at that line. Then I'm like, maybe, it, maybe I took it wrong. I don't know. But um, this scene actually was such a buildup, but so disappointing for me because I wanted a scuffle. There was no yes. action in this episode. I thought this was it. Here we go. Somebody's getting toasted. They're getting cooked. There's two dragons. You can't walk away from the scene without dragon fire. And it didn't happen. I was like, come on, give me something. But um, very powerful scene. I just, I was ready for a fight. It's setting up. It's setting up something. Absolutely. Um, And real quick before we move on, I love the way they showed Rhaenyra entering this. With her dragon flying under the clouds and having that ripple, yeah, that like was here, oh like yeah, underwater, total, total visual of awesomeness right there. Mm -hmm. I think this is it. Their breakthrough conversation between you know father and daughter, where she's yeah. like, she finally, yeah, because he like he yells at he gets on her right here. You will pause it. So he get so he gets on her right here because he's just getting back from Dragonstone. This is when the guard comes in. Hey, Princess Rhaenyra is back from Dragonstone. He's like Dragonstone. What? When she got a dragonstone, yeah, and then he kind of lays into her. But then here we finally have that breakthrough, where they're like, "We get it. You have you're the king. You have to do what's right to the land. You have to remarry." And she she's under the impression that she's telling him to marry uh, the Valyrian girl, yeah, twelve year old, because she's like, "We get it. You got to strengthen the house." So she's fully on board, right? 
then that twist comes. <laughs> so then after that, we get to the final scene of the episode where the king announces he's going to get married. Mm-hmm. He is going to uh, <laughs> take a wife. And everyone assumes it's that little child that we saw Ooh. earlier on. And now, he, for a quick foreshadowing. Yeah. It's interesting that the hand's daughter is here. Yeah. We find out why, but it's it's very looking back now it's like, well why is she here? And so the king makes an announcement. He's like, "Well, I'm going to marry." And out of out of craziness that nobody saw coming, and then this stare down because the king look he the king looks at Rhaenyra and then he looks right at her. And Rhaenyra's like, why are you looking at her? And then that's when it's like, my drop. Yep. I'm going to marry this one. Ooh. The hand's daughter, everyone. Hightower? Is that right? Hightower? Yes. Yeah. Otto Hightower is his name. Her name is Alicent. Alicent Hightower. And everybody loses their mind. Mm-hmm. Everybody's upset. Everyone is angry. And then we get to the final scene of the episode. Where we see Damon now talking. Lord Corliss Valerian. Yes. And they it looks like they put a little bond together. Form so, a little alliance here. Yeah. So there's a little alliance. And I love this scene because it starts out showing Valerian, you know, talking. You're like, well, who's he talking to? Of course, I think we all knew. And then it cuts and shows Damon. You're like, oh, okay. He's trying to go behind the king's back. But I love it when he basically you know, is crap talking the king. And Damon says, I'll say what I want about my brother, but you will not say what you want about your king. And I'm like, there's still Damon loves his brother. There's still that strong respect. It's just Damon's catching the short end of the stick. But I just yeah. love that that line because it put him right back in his place. Because he thought he was building up getting all high and mighty. And Damon said, No, sit back down. Yeah, you're not going to say that kind of things about the king, it. also my brother. And then that's when he kind of like swallows his pride for a hot second and then comes back with I forgot what he what the finishing line is, but that was a and, strong scene. And that's the end of the show, episode 2. Whew. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to see a couple games, a couple thrones and we don't know even we don't even know the time jump that could happen. We got a kid. So, we got a kid in there. <laughs> what we see in the in the uh the previews for the next episode they showed yeah already so it could have been it could be another year um maybe two so it's gonna get interesting quickly but they definitely are set a lot of stuff up as to where the games are going that's all i have to say <laughs> yeah <laughs> where the games are going so i will say they're they're crushing this so far hbo is crushing this so far when it comes to story and how they're telling it well, I hope they learn from the mistakes from season eight of Games of Thrones, and we're like, yeah. we're not going to do that. This like, is definitely, uh, a, yeah, definitely a build up. I mean, the build up is there. The mm-hmm. intensity is building. I just don't want whatever the arc, <laughs> and then when we finally get to the end of this build up, that we're not let down. But yeah, so far, uh, it's it's good, good stuff. So far, so good. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Lee. This was episode two breakdown review. We'll be back next week for episode three. If you want to know their links, they are in the description below. Go check them out. They got awesome channels, Twitch channels, everything. Everything that you need will be in the description, everyone. Um, So thanks for doing this, fellas. Y'all have an amazing, magical, dragon, happy day. That's the stupidest (laughs) ending ever. But we're going to go with it. (laughs) 